Good Chef since 2007, using your culinary skills and knowledge of food, nutrition, and the physiology of the body in concert with holistic nutritional theories and modalities. She helps her clients achieve wellness through the power of whole, real food, consumed as part of a customized balance plan. She empowers them, no matter their age or stage of life, to realize their own potential for following a healthy lifestyle based on their individual needs. Welcome, Lori. <laughs> Alan, you and I met on a radio show. There you are. Oh, good. So nice to meet you in person. Welcome. Um, Alan is a, a psychotherapist and founder of Sacred, Heal uh, Sacred River Healing. He was a leader of the Students for a Democratic Society at the University of Florida in Gainesville during the 1960s. Uh, he went with a group of, left, of new left leaders to Cuba at the invitation of the Cuban government in 1967. In 1970, he became a student and then teacher of a transformational spiritual practice. Angie? Angie? Agni, oh yeah, that, that, very good. Agni Yoga in California. He became a licensed psychotherapist in 1985 and has been integrating psychology with the study of shamanism and meditation practices. For several decades, he has, uh, he has been focused on integrating the political action with spirituality. He moved to New York in 2004 and has a psychotherapy pra uh, practice, teaches meditation, and has been focusing on what he calls holistic activism. Welcome, Alan. So let me get you guys set up here. Oh, your microphone is on. You see how close I'm holding it to my face? It's uncomfortably close, so that's what you have to do so everyone can hear you. Um, and I'm sure there are a lot of questions. Uh, I know there will be a lot of questions when I say we have time for one more. So don't <laughs> wait, because only one of you gets to be the last one. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll just start by asking you, and um, for the first question, please all feel free to, to sort of give us a... And, uh, an idea of your thoughts, and then later on, if one question speaks to one of you, then just one of you can respond, and then we'll get more questions in, um, or two, whatever. Um, so there were there were a lot of different practices that we learned about here, a lot of different stories. Um, do you believe in all of it? So grab grab the microphone and tell us your thoughts. That was a pretty open-ended question. Go do with, with it what you will. I could speak from personal experience. May I have your attention, please? The library will be closing in a half hour. Please note that the computers will be shutting down in about 15 minutes. Please save all your work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, Lori. It's like a long time I had a football game. <laughs> uh, I, about 25 years ago, I got, um, I had an experience with illness and I learned through the healing process that I had to call on quite a number, all aspects of my being. Uh, I used my spiritual beliefs. I am in tune with my, my beliefs. I called on my spiritual community. I did psychotherapy. I tried to get to the root of the mind-body connection and what was blocking in my mind, my subconscious. I removed myself from toxicity of a career that I had, and I started gardening, and I just want to be in the earth. And with the emotional healing and learning about the positive life force of real food that I was growing, that's what spoke to me. And from that illness and from that experience, is where I just took off to learn all I could about the power of all those things to heal. But my particular thing that spoke to me was the healing power of the life energy force of clean food. And that's how my journey started, and that's how I, you know, that I focused on. Thank you. I guess for me, the, the short answer would be just that um, I'm really fortunate in my training. Uh, I believe in infinite possibilities. And that... I'm sorry, but <laughs> I said that I believe in infinite possibilities. And to me, the multiverse um, is much more interesting than what's the known universe. And I get to see miraculous things happen every single day. So in that sense, I do believe in what was presented. I hope that we don't just get those one ideas that that's what sound healing is, because I've 
that was a different type of sound healing. There's lots of fabulous practitioners who do, but I would consider a little more organic. And same with the EFT practitioner. That's a modality I love, and I encourage everybody to go to EFTUniverse.com. It's a resource to use. It's all free. You could try it tonight. Amazing energy psychology work. So I don't agree with every single thing in that way, but I, but I believe in whatever works and whatever helps and whatever heals because that's what I believe we're here to do. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> the question is, do I believe in all that? Um, well, what I would really like to do with something like that is after about two or three minutes of each segment, have a small group get together and say, what does that make you feel? What do you think about that? There's so much in there, there's so much to process and uh, many levels of healing that were discussed. Um, I guess one of my concerns would be, let me ask a question, how many of you feel confused from what was presented there? Yeah, there's a lot, and uh, you know, I'm a psychotherapist who integrates spiritual practice, uh, meditation, shamanic journey, and uh, I'm, I'm a believer, so to speak, in my experience and the experience that I have with other people. Um, but it's complicated. And I, I, I really hope nobody took, for instance, the one fallacy that's very destructive that comes sometimes out of holistic healing, holistic health talks, is that you might feel guilty if you don't believe it, or you might feel guilty if you're taking a medicine, or you might feel like because you have some chronic illness, you caused it. Um, that's a misinterpretation, I think, of what a lot of these people have said, but in little sound bites, holistic healing can be confusing and sometimes misinterpreted. Does that answer your question? Perfectly. So, who has the next question? Oh, hold on one second. Let me bring you the microphone so everyone can hear you. I don't know if I believe everything in that film, but I haven't taken medicine in 39 years, commercial. Um, I don't do only herbals and homeopathy. Um, and I did get stressed three years ago, three and a half years ago, my father was dying because I had a miserable brother-in-law <laughs> that lived near where the nursing home was for my father. And I, I got sick at that point. I inflamed and I got big belly symptoms for the first time in my life. So um, negative thoughts can kill you. Negative thoughts can make you sick. But if you just go back to eating properly and staying off from the pharmaceutical industry medicines that they want to give you that have 300 side effects and make you sicker and sicker, I, I agree with that part of the, the film. I just want to know where I can get that film. There's certain things in the film I'm interested in. Google, Amazon, Google. Amazon. Amazon. <laughs> More questions for our panelists or for the room? If there's a microphone coming to you right now. And I, I haven't spent a lot of time in LA, but is it gorgeous everywhere in LA? <laughs> yes. no. no, it's not, right? No. Just in this film, yeah. right? Okay. It takes forever to drive anywhere. <laughs> yes, yes. There was no car shots. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Uh, so I've been struggling with chronic illness for like two and a half, three years chronic fatigue. Um, I probably spent like five, six hours a day like researching like mind-body connection, like how this came about. And I think I have a really good understanding and I believe so much of like what was said in that documentary. And like at my issue, I guess it's more of like maybe advice for you all is I think I found the source of like how this all manifested. And my environment right now is toxic, like not just my mental environment, but like my living condition. And I'm stuck there right now, like financially. So do you think that it's like still possible like to heal like despite like, 
still living in what you think, like, like it's like such a big goal. Mm -hmm. Good question. Yes. <clears throat> The short answer is anything's possible, and it's certainly worth um, you know putting putting attention in the direction of some of the uh, offerings that are available to you in working with the mind body connection and working with opening to the the deeper source of where healing comes from, which is not from the, the thinking mind, but from a higher source that's within us. Wait, did you want to add to that? I agree, of course, with Alan that, that everything is possible. And um, one Taoist manifestation technique that we practice is, um, and I think it was alluded to in the film and lots of other <coughs> traditions use it, is to spend time every day, maybe even twice a day at the same time, deeply connecting to how you will feel when you're in your ideal environment. Mm -hmm. And let your cells bathe in that. And um, it's not just imagine how you feel, it's practice feeling that way. And allow things to shift and figure out also what might be the block. Finances are real and relationships are complicated and lives are not always easy to navigate. But if you can work to change the, um, the vibration inside, you'll notice that things shift all around you. That's how vibration works, right? And just practice that. And the more time you practice that, you'll just be amazed. Okay. That's gratitude. Thank gratitude. You. Gratitude. And, and Valerie says also gratitude. <laughs> Thank you. OK. Um, um, I'm on a similar situation as her with finances and whatever. Being ex and I'm being exposed to, well, to bear, my environment is totally toxic, physically, environmentally, and um, being treated for all sorts of symptoms. But um, I think that if your environment is bad, you need to take care of that because you're not going to be able to take care of uh, finances or whatever else is getting you, um, whatever <coughs> has you stuck there because you're getting sick. And, uh, and, and I am the person, I think everybody knows that I'm very positive and I'm out there and as sick as I am right now, I'm, I'm still attempting to function. Now, finally, I have been fighting the situation and it's being remediated uh, as I speak. Uh, but um, I believe that um, you can have all the positive attitude and you can think beyond your problems and, um, you know, at my age, I volunteer, I do, I mean, I'm active, right? And um, I could be feeling sick and he as hell and I still go and do what I promise I will do. But that's, you know, that doesn't stop you from being, from being unwell. Because your environment, your immediate environment, where you're sleeping and trying to rest, it's not, it's toxic, it's not healthy. So, <coughs> I think that what, I think that what, um, you know, what uh, all the, the whole documentary, there are lots of, um, I don't think that they touched they did, yeah, they touched on root cause, but not in the context of, 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 you know, looking at the environment. What in your environment, I mean, is causing whatever your symptoms are? So there's external environment and there's internal environment. Okay. Say it again. There's external environments and there's internal environments, right? And sometimes we can't always change the external environments right away because life is complicated and money is money and all these things. But when we're working deeply through meditation, through psycho-spiritual counseling, through giving ourselves proper food, rest, cultivating happiness, right? It's great to do all of these things, but are those the things that make you happy? Do those bring you joys or is it because you promised to do something? 
sounds like a burden when I'm listening. I mean, I'm a little stressed out, you know, hearing about it. <laughs> no, I'm not, not mean to be funny. I, um, it was the same as when we were watching the TV clips meant to stress us out. I don't, I don't expose myself to that. That was traumatic for me. Had I known it was going to be like that, I, I would have said no. <laughs> so we have choices. Thank you. <laughs> right? Um, there's awareness, and then there's choices, and then there's meaningful change. And sometimes it's bit by bit that you take the first step. And I think that has to come from inside of us because we can't control anyone or anything else, even our environment sometimes. Right? And there's plenty of people living in horrible conditions that can find a way to cultivate happiness. Right? Many of us have so, so, so much, but we don't feel that way. We feel impoverished. Right? We feel unwell. So, perception. You know? Is there another question? Yes. Can, I, can I just add one Please. thing about, since the word environment got mentioned, I can't help but call attention to the fact that we are all under an extreme level of stress right now. All of humanity collectively is under an extreme level of stress because the, what we are embedded in as in what we call an environment, which is nature, which we're a part of, is going through a, an incredible crisis. And uh, we can't help but feel emotionally distraught and grief and fear and those kinds of emotions have to be processed and, and very few people are aware of the need to process the emotional reactions that we have to the world situation. People listening to the news are getting, they say, it makes me sick and it is. But wait, one, one thing I want to add to that is when you're aware of a problem inside yourself, if you're proactively working on those negative emotions, on whatever... May I have your attention, please? The library will be closing in 10 minutes. If you have any items you wish to check out, please bring them to the circulation desk now. The library will be open tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Thank you, and have a good evening. It's like oh Thich Nhat Hanh's bell, you know, makes you pause and stuff. So, when you're proactively working consciously on your health, it, that in itself starts to make you feel better. And when people are actively working on healing and repairing uh, what's going on in the world in terms of social justice, in terms of extreme poverty, in terms of hunger problems that exist all, and, and malnutrition all throughout the world, and what's happening to all of the species on Earth, including the human species, if you're actively working on that, it helps you to feel better. Yeah. Um, I had never seen sound therapy before, so I thought that was a little interesting, and you said uh, you've seen it different. Could you tell me a little bit about that? There are lots of great practitioners who work with uh, Tibetan singing bowls and uh, tuning forks on body and uh, planetary gongs and uh, chanting and mantra and I'm uh, singing the sound table. The sound table. I mean, the list is endless, but I've never seen tuning forks. I use tuning forks. <laughs> but um, there's such a beautiful array as a song. Like think about just church hymns and how uplifting that might be for people. I just mean to say that. Um, it can be very lo-fi and very DIY. I mean, there's great uh, science right now on anxiety and, and, and uh, singing bowls. And particularly for people who've never heard one, I wish I would have brought one, but I, I didn't know. So um, that's why monks chant. And this is from probably the beginning of humanity. So I've never really seen people hooked up and waiting for the thing to go to the zero. Like science and, speaks. Yeah, and I mean, that was cool, but I just mean, if you hear of something sound healing, please go because you don't necessarily have to get hooked up to think. You're experiencing something in a community that is very aligning uh, to, to us. Susan, 
Clifton. Uh, you have, you, Susan, you have singing, you have singing bowls. Michelle, Michelle, Michelle Clifton Michelle is a woman in the area that does, yeah, you can look it up when there's things going on locally. And I think, Nancy, you get our last question. I think the singing bowls are awesome, so I would recommend them. Um, I have a question about Eastern and Western medicine. That was one of the things that's confusing to me. I had cancer, and um, I'm very positive, and I'm all up for learning all kinds of things about eating differently. I've changed most of my life, but I'm now faced with taking a maintenance dose of chemotherapy, and some people say take it, some people say don't take it. You know, be alkaline. You know, do all these other things. Like, how do you know if you take the risk of not taking it when you hear what the statistics are, you know, the three times more people get, you know, don't get cancer back that take this medication than that can't take it and, you know, so but that was confusing to me. The woman, the woman took the medication, um, the chemotherapy, and she got better and she mixed Eastern with Western and how do you feel about that? I think you have to believe, like the film said, in what you're doing. And there's so much information out there. Um, naturopathic medicine, homeopathy, acupuncture, herbs. It's all getting back to nature and the same elements that make us up, that make that you take from those things. Um, I think you have to do as much research as you possibly can without getting too emotional about it and just like in little steps and remain positive and all those fear, that fear has to, you know, be alleviated. But there are, but it's empowering. Holistic practitioners, which I'm not one, but my experience in going to those types of healing and I've become a little bit well versed in all those is so empowering and there's so much less fear in those things and there's so much optimism and positivity and they teach you so much and you learn so much from them. So I encourage you to, whatever you decide, I believe you said earlier, it's not a guilt, you're not doing anything wrong, it's just you're trying to make the best decisions like anything else in life. You just feel like you don't have the time, like you want to know everything right this minute so that you can start getting, you know, healing and getting better so quickly. So, go ahead, just say, talk. Let me see. I mean, like, real medicine is the medicine that works for you. And there's no judgment about which type that is or how you find that healing. But I think that has to come from a self inquiry and asking yourself honestly and maybe meeting with some practitioners and feel how you feel when you're in their space and when you're in their care and are you being listened to? Are you being empowered, right? Where the mind goes, the chi follows. So um, science is, I didn't, I didn't say this, but science might prove that the fear of cancer is more deadly than cancer. We're very close to that. That's not to say you shouldn't go get care, you should get all the care that you need until you're well. Um, I'd like, I'd like to ask all of our panelists to uh, give us a final thought. Um, and, and one thing that struck me about this film where I feel it's incongruous with our community here in Austin, we're a very economically diverse community. And the point was made that most of these services are not covered by insurance. And um, how can those of us who don't live in homes overlooking beautiful canyons. Uh, how can we uh, find the right path to get um, healing support, to, to find the practitioners that are not going to be covered by our health insurance? What are, aside from some of the wonderful practices that have been suggested about meditation, which is free, go to a beautiful park, we have lots of them. But um, if, if you need more than that, if, especially if you need more guidance, what, what do you recommend to people that don't have a lot of disposable income to be able to have this sort of balanced approach to their healing? And if you had any other thoughts that you didn't get to express, um, please do in the last 30 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot. Um, yeah, you're, it's, a, it's a hard situation. I mean, I'm a big supporter of Medicare for All, single payer. Uh, and uh, yet, 
I am doubtful whether a lot of the holistic modalities uh, that could be very, very helpful are going to get covered. Uh, that's, a, that's a paradigm shift. The ideas and beliefs and um, things that were being said in that film are, are, are a major shift in the way that we have been raised to think about who we are, what reality is, what's possible, uh, where healing comes from, and so it's, it's going to take a while, and I think right now, unfortunately, only people who can pretty much afford it can, can get access to a lot of these modalities. But certain things, like meditation, um, like sometimes practitioners who are generous enough to offer a sliding scale, um, you can look around and uh, call me. <laughs> I'll talk to you. I think that there, like um, what was just mentioned, there are a lot of practitioners who uh, don't have to be expensive to be good. Uh, I think the more expensive ones are the ones to be leery of. Uh, when it comes, you know, being in nature, exercising in nature, breathing. Of course, food. Go to your farmers markets. Talk to farmers. See what they're growing. Buy what the earth gives us when it gives it to us. Clean food, clean water, simple. You don't have to spend an hour or more in the kitchen. Just believe in what you're doing and get as back to nature as you possibly can. How, how can we find um, access to yeah. Yeah. a holistic healing yeah. on a fixed income? Have, have different conversations um, at local political levels and start talking about this. Say that you want community clinics and say that you want, um, say that that's the care that you want. Tell your insurance provider, tell your HR person, you know, offer, call, call us up, say, hey, I have a, a, a meeting hall, would you do a community acupuncture day? Would you come and do group tapping? You know, could we have a soup, a soup for all day where it's donation based? We want to do this, um, and I think it's about connecting community and continuing to do this kind of mind meld. All the resources are there. I think it's um, about learning that we have enough and that we want to share, and kind of connecting that up um, through the quantum field, essentially. Thank you very much to all of our panelists. Thank you all of you for being here. Oh, oh sir, did you have one final question? Oh, sorry, sorry, did you... I have one question. I've never seen so many 